Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Hungry People Podcast, home of the hungry people. It's your boy, Michael Patrick Buckley, here with the coast, AJ, the killer Dibka. Guys, on last week's episode, AJ and I had such a fun and enjoyable talk about enzymes. If you did not listen to that, please go check that out. Uh, very informative. We talk about some experiences that we have, we've, we've had with enzymes, some of the benefits of enzymes, uh, some downsides. No, we don't talk about downsides because there are no downsides of enzymes. <laughs> no, there, 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 I guess there could be some downsides. Uh, just, the, but, just the money. Yeah, 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 right. They are, they are pretty expensive. Um, but overall, I mean, enzymes, awesome stuff. Um, they, make, they make me feel amazing. They make my digestion rocking and rolling. So go check it out. Go get some enzymes and keep balling, baby. AJ? What's up, my dude? Happy to be here. MP, it's been so awesome getting back into the swing of things. I think that there's a lot of exciting stuff to come. So if you're interested and you want to hear what we have to say, make sure to uh, go down below, hit that little stupid subscribe button. And uh, <laughs> and if you listen on Spotify, you'd rather listen on Apple Podcasts. We're there as well. Um, but a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting topics, a lot of reaction stuff, and a lot of long-form discussion coming your way. Yeah, there's going to be... Um... Some great stuff. Some questions that like we are really interested in ourselves that we are coming up with, but also some questions that we are getting from some people that we know. And this is what we want the podcast to be about. We want it to be about real life interactions that we have that we can bring to you and bring in, bring light to you that really no one else is talking about. So uh, that's the beauty of Hungry People. Now, today... Uh, I was having a conversation with a special someone and we were just talking about late night eating and binge eating and how this individual, uh, after dinner, she just like right away, you know, just kind of wants some chocolate or wants some candy or something. And some days it turns into an issue. And other days it's, um, it's okay. Right. Which I think we all can relate with that, but I think over the long haul, it's best to get something like that under control. Now, I know that there's uh, with, with a lot of these, like a lot of these issues, it can be like hard just to like completely throw it out the window, you know. So someone wants to say, "Oh, I like I want to stop using my phone in the morning," right? So they they want to just like do it all at once, but then maybe they'll get mad at themselves that they like look at their phone in the morning. Which if you have an alarm on your phone, you pretty much look at your phone like right when you get up. Uh, but it's just little stuff like that, you know, or someone who wants to maybe incorporate more exercise into their life. Uh, it's not only good to do it every single day, but you just, you slowly work it in. So I think it's something like this to where you don't necessarily have to just completely get rid of, you know, late night eating um, on, on sweets. But if it's like that bad of an issue, um, then obviously you got to look at it deeper. Now, the question that AJ and I are going to, that we're going to answer today and talk about is, how to stop <laughs> late night binging. <laughs> so, uh, AJ, I can, I know I've just had, I kind of went on a little rant there. Uh, I, I feel like I actually just said like a lot of stuff that I wanted to say later and maybe I should have waited to say that. Um, but all good. Yeah. But I can start with, I can start or if you want to, if you want to start off, um totally up to you yeah let me just make a distinction real quick um we're gonna be talking about like having sweets after dinner and maybe overdoing that but then also just talk about people who are eating too much at night overeating right. eating late all these types of things we're gonna talk about why that's happening uh across the board what habits can you implement that will minimize that uh and so on and so forth right Love it, AJ. Love it. You froze. No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. We're here. We're here. We're here. Um. So yeah. Great. Great points, AJ. Um. Let's get right to it, dude. So, uh, I guess where I where I stand with a lot of this stuff is if you are having these kind of issues and there's certain foods in your house that you know whether it is late night or even in, you could say in daytime, but really in the, in the late night, that's really where I feel the triggering comes in. Uh, then the first initial step is to just not have the food available. And I know that like, that could be something that's, that's hard for a lot of people to do, but I think that if you can find the the strength to just, to not buy that item, I think that's, that's, that's going to be the first step in, 
uh, relieving yourself of this issue. Matter of fact, I think even Jen Hawk mentioned this mentions this on one of her one of her podcasts or one of her shows or YouTube videos, uh, where she talks about like, oh my gosh, if I have like peanut butter in the house or something or maybe olive butter, it's like all she wants to eat. She can't stop like she can't stop thinking about it. It's just like nonstop in her mind. And there are even some certain foods that I have with that as well. Um, matter of fact, I actually, uh, there's this, there's this, uh, plant-based queso that I love. Uh, I forget what it's called, but they used to, they used to sell it at Costco in these like big, these like big tubs and you can get them at Target for like probably a third of the size. Uh, and I just remember like a year ago I would, uh, get one and I'd eat, I'm not kidding. I'd eat the big one in like two days. It was like an issue. And it's like, dude, you just got to stop. Like you got to stop buying it. You just, you got to stop buying it. Now I bought the little one, the little tub for a Christmas for a new year's Eve party. And mm. uh, I had it and no one ate it because I bought another tub too, but we like all ate that one. So I took this one home and I even remember that one lasted me about four days. Like I didn't just like want to, you know, totally just dev- like crush it, you know, and just binge on it. So something right. Like, I will say, like, my appetite has gotten completely under control recently, and I'm in, like, a really great state. So I think that plays a a big role in it. But, um, yeah, so anyways, the the, my my first thought is, like, don't buy whatever you're binging on late. That was it. Now, the really good point. I would have I would have forgot to bring that one up. But that's a big thing that people need to understand if it's in the house and it's something you either cannot eat, should not eat, uh, you know, you have a goal in mind, whether it's diabetes or weight loss or heart disease or some kind of health implication if it's there it, it's just that much more challenging for you so really good point to remove that out of there and if you have like a here's where we run into another issue you live with husband wife partner whatever yeah right they eat all that stuff now it's become a lot trickier because they don't want right. you throwing away their food right they want that right. option there and depending upon what the issue is and how serious it is uh, you are going to have to either convince them or come up with some kind of solution where it's uh, it, it leads to you having more success because if they don't want to support you and you're having a really hard time, that's a really red flag and you should, right. you know, consider seeking maybe some professional help on, uh, you know, insights on how to implement that a lot better, like psychologists, right. uh, Dr. Lyle, things like that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even imagine like, I mean, I, I guess I could imagine it, but having kids, <laughs> Because... <laughs> that's what i mean when you do that <laughs> i was just gonna say like having kids and it's like okay i could imagine having kids <laughs> um but you know having kids and having children there's like always little snacks around and i even uh i was gonna put a story up on instagram the one day and it's gonna say oh i can't wait to buy these it's it's like this huge uh this huge pretty much like a bucket of animal crackers and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to buy these animal crackers for my kids one day so that I could just, you know, finally get to eat them again. <laughs> I didn't put it up though. Um, but like, I think if we're being real though, you know, you have kids, like we ate that kind of stuff when we were younger. So, you know, I'm not saying that we need to give our kids the same food that we ate. Like we can obviously feed our kids better and don't have to give them like shit and whatnot. But I think a lot of times, a lot of parents don't know exactly what they're feeding their kids. And you get a lot of families who just feed their kids whatever they want. So then it's like my kid could be feel left out because he's not getting the treat. He's not getting the snack that the other kids are getting and he's getting apples and oranges, you know, and, and whatever, right. Versus the fruit snacks or, uh, I don't know the, the cookies or the whatever. Um, so I think like, like you said before, you know, having an, having a partner who isn't necessarily on the same page with you, I think having kids is another, is another, uh, plays another role in that as well. So, um, yeah, let's break down some of the main reasons why people are eating late. They're eating too much too late. They're eating too much dessert after dinner. If we go back to the 80, 10, 10 days when everyone was (laughs) raw till four or eighties and 10 (laughs) eating fruit based with some low fat lettuce for dinner, uh, (laughs) the big popular thing with Harley during rider, Furley, the banana girl, uh, Dr. Doug Graham and all these people, they'd be like, the reason why you want dessert is because you don't have enough sweet before. So have, yeah. have fucking 800 grams of sugar before dinner and surprise, surprise, after you have dinner, you won't want more sugar. Well, no shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Like during rudder, he says like, Oh, well, how do you know you've had enough sugar? 
you, your body will tell you it's it's like doesn't want yeah, any more you're sugar. Be it's like you're ready to puke. It. Right, you're ready to puke from all the sugar you've already eaten that you don't want anymore. So, <laughs> right. Um. Now, like, I mean, I can. So I can that's agree. like the classic answer in in the fruit based world. Like, yeah, you haven't had I, enough sweet. Right. I I guess like the thought is like if you if you want dessert after you've eaten dinner, you want something sweet after you've eaten dinner. You haven't eaten enough fruit in the day. And I think that's, I think that could be a pretty reasonable argument though. Could you like, would you agree with that? But I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's not even, maybe not even fruit though, but just nutrition in general. Go ahead. Yeah. You could say calories. You could say fruit. You could say from my point of view, minerals, you could say right. a bunch of different things. I think that for me eating fruit so much fruit for so long, it really worked. Like I never want to eat sweet again. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> like I don't just want to not eat dessert. Like I just am like tired of it. But right. I think that if people are, and this happens all the time in any kind of nutrition culture, people barely eat all day and then they have dinner and then they're starving. Yeah. Right. We've both experienced that. We've exactly. known people. We've watched countless YouTube videos, talked with countless people who are vegan, raw vegan, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's usually a really, really big reason why people are eating late at night. They're overeating at one meal. It's because they haven't really eaten that much all day. Right. Because chances are they did do that binge the night before. So, of course, they can get away with it for a pretty long time during the day of like running on water, running on coffee, running, running right. on, you know, whatever, and just eating lighter. But eventually you do need more nutrition. We can mm -hmm. get into the arguments of what's the most nutrition or whatever, uh, that's not really the point. The point is you just express that you have the most control over your, uh, eating habits with the queso story. And I'm kind of the same way right now where I don't binge eat at all, but yeah. I also don't just have one meal a day or things. And, right. uh, I think that stuff can have its place, but at the same time, it's really, really tricky. It's really challenging. It's easy to get yourself worked up into a corner mm -hmm. where, uh, you're, you're, you're now facing an issue, uh, yeah, 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 no doubt about it. And um, there's obviously uh, there's a lot of factors that have gone into me getting the results that I've been getting recently, uh, and I'm very fortunate for that. And I'm very glad that I came out of like my old mindset, uh, which was honestly like carb the f up, like legit, just eat hella carbohydrate, like, just eat so much fruit and rice and potatoes, and that's it. And I that that honestly kind of left me starving. Like I just was hungry and hungrier. Whereas yeah. like now I'm actually like eating more fat, eating more protein. I definitely feel like I'm getting, I'm getting more nourished and I'm not as hungry, which I'm totally cool with. I'm totally like, I feel so much better. I look good. Like I feel good. I feel phenomenal. I'm not like super, like I'm not super stuffed all the time. Like tonight I had like, yeah, a pretty decent sized meal, but that's, it's enough. I'm good. I don't, I don't need to eat anymore. I ate enough. It's perfect. Let's, you know, let's keep moving forward. Uh, and I still sort of have like, a calorie intake on my mind. Um, but I still feel like I'm hitting it though each day. Right. Uh, so yeah, so I definitely think, um, eating in the morning and eating it in the midday and eating dinner. I think it's all, I think it all, it's all crucial. And it's all going into this. Right. So like, let's even take someone if they're, if you're getting up and having a huge breakfast, I would argue that you're prop you're probably not binge eating in the evening. Like you're probably eating like a small dinner and you know, that's, that's sustainable for you or that sustains you for the rest of the night. And you get up and you eat a big breakfast. Like some people probably do that. I'd probably say it's more the opposite to where people are most likely eating a bigger dinner and you're having a smaller breakfast, which is kind of like where I'm, where I'm at. Um, but uh, yeah, I do think that that like, if you can even out your calories and even out your meal during the day, then you can actually potentially save yourself from wanting to binge eat later in the evening. Cause you're not, cause like, it's simply just, you're not eating enough food like that. That could really just be the issue that you're dealing with. Yeah. And you've even said it to me before where it's like, you don't want to have a smaller dinner. Like that's what you kind of look forward to, right? Like yeah, you right. want to have a big dinner that you kind of can reach your peak at. And that's how I was on raw till four as well. Like I was having 20 banana smoothies and stuff. And then at dinner, I wanted to just eat as much rice as possible. Right. right? Uh, yeah. Even though like when I was eating the bananas all day, I wasn't satisfied at all. And all I could think of was dinner. Right. <laughs> I would have felt less hungry if I was having less calories, but just different food, which is right. funny to think about. Remember, um, but right. I, I remember that feeling. And I think I still have that, but really one of the big implications 
that for me makes it harder to say, uh, let's say not like eat at night or eat a lot at night is it's work schedule. Yeah. I think yeah, finish tough. finishing work later is a huge impact on how we eat. If you have a long day and you finish at six, seven, eight o'clock at night, yeah, chances are you didn't eat dinner before. And then also like come home, you want to unwind, you want to make some food, you want you maybe too much time went by during work to where you did build up a lot of an appetite. Right. And now you start to get into that mode where you eat and then you're like, what else should I eat? And it just keeps going and going. I think right. that's uh an underappreciated aspect because when I started working at the dealership, diet was like the hardest thing to kind of regulate other than just eat whatever. And then same thing, I'd come home and eat a whole pizza or whatever. It was just really challenging uh, when you have a long day. But I feel like people who can finish their days earlier and they have a little bit more time to just unwind, relax, eat something, it's not as crazy. Yeah, no doubt. I think that I think the hustle and bustle of all of it does build up stress in the body. And then you come back and and I even heard it from a lot of people who I talk with. They just like, I just want like something sweet. And they like, they just want that like savory, sweet, savory, rich dish that like honestly keeps them, that keeps them, um, I don't want to say medicated, but like just like tones them down in, at night. Yeah. And uh, it's for a lot of people. That's, I mean, in, in AJ, we know that sugar lowers cortisol. <laughs> so lies 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 so it makes it makes perfect sense that uh you know people they want the ice cream they want the cookies they want the cakes to unwind because they probably are so stressed out uh but no for real though i i do i do think that like uh sugar can have like uh a stress reducing effect on the body but you know everyone eats the wrong sugar and it's always at the wrong time but it's also like if you, if you think of food combining, should you be eating bananas and apples? You know, like should you be binging on bananas and apples late in the evening? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Probably like not. after eating, you know, whatever meal you ate, because that's just probably gonna. Not, yeah. I mean, it's all probably just gonna ferment anyways if it's on top of each other. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so it's kind of like pick your poison. Do you want the do you want the the cake sugar or do you want the apple sugar? It's like what's healthier, what's better for you at that point? They probably are both. It's kind of like, yeah, well, that's right. Well, let's get into a, into another, uh, part of that, that kind of builds off. This is like when you're eating cake, you're you're eating a lot of other things too. You're eating. Yeah. Right. If there's preservative preservatives, chemical sodium, uh, flowers, fat, seed oils, all these things. So you're not just getting like just the sugar. Um, but, but everyone, everyone just says it's sugar though. Everyone just says it's sugar though. Right. Right. But like the transition I want to make is the fact that like, whether you believe in, candida or or some kind of like gut dysbiosis uh permeability whatever this could be another thing another factor Mm -hmm. yeah because if you really do have some kind of uh disturbance in your gut you might crave stuff more and you also might have you might have a lower blood sugar at certain times of the day Mm -hmm. you might have higher so like you might you might be having reactions in your body that are making you crave that. And some of the reasons you're craving it is because you haven't been resting. You're over caffeinated. You're yeah. underslept. Yeah. You've been eating crap all day, or you haven't been eating enough, uh, enough good food. So that when it comes to that time, it's like, all right, density, density, high stimulus, sugar, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just hard. It's almost like we're living in a way that makes it impossible to not do the bad thing. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's like, it's going to lead into the bad thing almost every time because of just how life is nowadays. I want to eat the perfect diet, but I'm stressed out. I have no time to prepare. Yeah. I have no support, but I still want to do this perfectly. Finish at four thirty five. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's impossible. <laughs> if you want, if you want to do those things, you have to also live in a way that complements them. Like if exactly. you want to finish eating by four o'clock, I hope you're waking up at 5. AM. Yeah. I, don't hope, I hope you don't wake up at like one o'clock in the afternoon. You're like, I have to stop eating by four. It's yeah. Just, right. We make it so, I think rigidness and scheduling is kind of good, but when we make it impossible, it's obviously not good. Right. Yeah. That's the thing is like, <laughs> that, that, that people come on the internet here and they, and they tell you what to do when they say, oh, you know, stop, like, like you said, stop eating at a certain time. Or when you get up in the morning, you have to, you know, you have to eat 30 minutes after waking, but like, there's just so, there's just so much that goes into it. And those same people aren't telling you like what goes into it. They're just like giving you these like baseline factors of what you should be doing for your health. And it's, it's annoying. Um, going off like the sugar craving stuff and the gut dysbiosis 
issue. I saw Tom Littlewood. He's a researcher that I follow um, online. And then I, I saw uh, some other, I think like maybe one or two guys post about it, but talking about how if you do have a sugar craving, it could be like, I think it's a glute four issue. That's like a glute, like a, one of the one of the glucose transports um, within mm-hmm. the cell or like getting the sugar into the cell or whatever. Uh, it's like, maybe it's not functioning properly. And that could be a reason as to why, you know, you have those sugar cravings. Uh, and it's like, how do you fix that? Well, I, I, you, you could probably say that that's probably somewhat diabetic or maybe even pre-diabetic issues that you're having there. Right. Um, so I would say with that, like obviously diet plays the biggest role. Oh, it doesn't actually, but I'd probably say sleep does and then exercise does and then like maybe stress and then maybe diet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Got a but, point. Yeah. Uh, there's actually, th- this kind of goes to something that we stated earlier. Uh, I work with somebody who she has like, I don't know, four or five children, maybe. Uh, really, really awesome girl. Like, uh, like fun to hang out with. Like when we do like work stuff. Um, and she's like really into the food. She's really into like holistic healing too. Like she goes to a holistic doctor and I'll talk to her. I talked to her about that kind of stuff, um, which is awesome. I ta- I asked her because I had, I think you had, oh no, we were at, I think it was a Christmas party or like a Christmas dinner. And uh, I said to her, I was like, oh, you don't want dessert after this? She's like, no. She's like, I rarely ever eat dessert. I just keep eating more dinner. She's like, I've just never been a fan of eating dessert. Uh, I just usually, I just try to make a lot of food. And if I'm still hungry, I'll just keep eating the food that I make. And uh, I think that's also something that like you could do if you really are, you know, trying to uh, stop this issue is maybe you're just not eating big enough portions, whether it is at dinner, lunch or breakfast, you know, so maybe that is best for you is just to eat more dinner. Um, Another thing too, AJ, that I've really, uh, I've really garnered over the past couple of months here is just like my, is just the mind and the mindset and legit just telling yourself that you're not, like you're not effing hungry. You know, you don't need this, right. like figure this, like figure it out. But I will say like, I have like pretty good mental stability and I can, I, I'm like sort of capable of doing that. Whereas like some people aren't like they can't do that or they can't get their mind to do that. But for me, like I can, like, I'm not kidding. I can like almost flip the switch and be like, dude, stop. And I like right. pretty much will for the most part. So. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think having a solution uh, or having an option where it's only going to work for you. So for example, if yeah. I eat dinner, I can keep eating. I can. Me eat. too. Yeah. I, like right now. I yeah, can if I eat keep, like I a, if going. I eat like a personal pizza, I could eat two of them. I could eat three of them probably. Yeah. But like, I know I don't need to, I know it's not necessary and I'm also not biking a hundred miles and all this stuff. Right. <laughs> but my mind and body would like a dessert would like something. And I mean, desserts like fucking eight. It's like a meal now. It's cost like $8 if you're somewhere yeah. right, or $10 or $15. Right. So like, I need, I wanted something like that's a solution to that. And like doing these like 7 Eleven green juices again, like it's got volume, it's sweet, it's hydrating, and it also makes it to where I'm not famished at the same time or have that like that uh, leftover feeling of like crazy hunger. Mm -hmm. So like I'll eat dinner, then I'll put one of these away at like an hour or two later, and it's like I'm, I'm content, right? Yeah. And I could go and spend another, you know, 80 bucks a week on, dessert and stuff or i could have like spend like 20 bucks and like have some of these right so they get good healthy options feel the same benefit even when i was raw i would do the salads and they were savory and then after dinner i would have one of these yeah. just because it like tops off the night and i think that there's a difference between like needing to be topped off because your body is actually needing something whether it's right. calories or, or minerals or whatever sugar and then there's the difference of just being a glutton you have to own up to which one you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of people who are gluttons who think I just uh, like they think they're gluttons and they think or they know they're gluttons and they're not going about it in the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Or they're not. Um, you're right. You're definitely right. And I think a lot of people are just gluttonous nowadays. Like they they just want the pleasure seeking food. And that's it. And they just don't even realize that. Uh I, um, because it was the holidays recently, or yeah, I guess like a month ago, 
this was something that I was doing because I was getting like a ton of gifts, like with like chocolate and candy and, and freaking biscuits and stuff. And it was like a lot of it was vegan. I was like kind of surprised actually. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I didn't want to just throw it away. And I, but I, so I wanted to like sort of incorporate it into my, into my food. Right. So, uh, uh, I'm, it's, it's kind of, this is kind of like the reverse of what's, of what's happening because <laughs> I, instead of eating like a huge dinner, I would actually like take off less of my dinner to save up more calorie space. And I would eat that food, but I was purposely mm-hmm. doing that. Right. I wasn't like, Oh, you know, I'm just going to make like, uh, sure. a third of the rice that I'm always make or, uh, like just do half the lettuce that I always make or half the dressing or half like, um, this was, I was actually doing it on purpose so that like I could eat those foods. And I was like, I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm owning up, I'm uh, legit owning up to like me eating bullshit processed foods <laughs> to myself. <laughs> so like, I also can have the ability to, to take it away from myself too, you know? So I think owning yeah, you up were is... purposely eating it. You weren't losing control. Yeah, exactly. Like it was, it was like, it's and there's still a matter of fact there's still a ton down there. I haven't even I haven't even eaten any of it. I did go to Florida for like two weeks, so that kind of ruined the energy there, which I'm not I'm not <laughs> mad about. <laughs> like I don't I don't need to eat it. It's totally fine. Um, right, right. but uh, yeah, maybe I'll like have like a handful of popcorn or something, or like a couple of biscuits here and there. So a whole handful, wow. Yeah, right. Or maybe a maybe a little bowl, a bowl full of popcorn. <laughs> it was it was good, good popcorn. It was like some, what was it like caramel or something? Yeah, legit. It was that, it was probably like some corn syrup, fucking caramel. Uh, you love your sugar, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> it's all carbs. Even your yeah, desserts are just carbs. Zero fat. <laughs> hey, hey, you like the flow? Look at this. Look at the flow. Shit's oh, crazy. Wow. Shit's <laughs> crazy. You heard? <laughs> we heard, cuz. Well, you got um, anything else? Uh, we could do some wrap up stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's well, let's just bring up. let's just recap. You know our most our the points that we that we talked about. So, number one, the the thing that I would say is that if there's a food that you're that you're ha- really having issues with that you're binge eating late night or that like you can't stop eating that like you do want to minimize, uh, stop buying the food. That's in my opinion. That's the first. That's the first step in this all. Uh, the second, a second, a second option that you could take is to actually eat whole meals and not just like, oh, I'm going to eat a hundred calories here. And then I'm going to eat 300 calories there. And I'm going to have a snack here. And I'm going to do 300 calories here. Like actually try to plan out your meals and eat whole meals and know your body's cal- cal- like caloric requirements and actually try to meet those. And if you're still hungry after that, then like, obviously, you know that there's something else going on. Like maybe you are doing too much exercise and you do need a little bit more food, or maybe you're just not eating enough calories and you, didn't, and you just got to have bigger portions. Um, so that is another option. The third, the third thing is maybe you just aren't getting enough nutrition in your food. Like maybe you are just eating like crappy food or maybe you're eating bullshit processed food. I don't know, whatever. Like maybe, maybe you really are just not getting enough nutrition from your food and you're like starving yourself. And like your body's starved, like it wants food and like, uh, or it wants nutrition or maybe it wants minerals or whatever. And you're just not giving your body that. And like, you could say that maybe you are getting that from the sugary late night snacks you're eating. I don't know. Um, but I think right. the nutrition, I think getting enough nutrition in general is going to be crucial for that. So that was three. AJ, do you want to add on some more there that you thought of? Even yeah, I, I want to add on the fact that hungry people, we, we stand for being nourished, whatever that means for you. Uh, we never want to push an agenda, even if we thought it was healthy, that is going to lead to you being starved, being hungry. We want, to be, we want to make sure you're nourished. And a lot of people aren't doing a lot of steps outside of food to be nourished in the sense that you want to optimize what you're putting into your body. And a lot of things that we're doing aren't are leading to... Uh, the opposite effect. For example, if you're not getting enough rest, yeah, you're most likely going to have blood sugar type issues because your hormones are not being regulated. Same thing. If you're overdoing, overusing caffeine, I just listened to Huberman talk with the, what's that plant-based guy 
that changed it, plant proof that guy yeah the proof the they proof. did a podcast together and they're talking about caffeine and they were He's like everywhere if you're exhausted and you taking caffeine it's it's dysregulating your system even more yeah whether it's your hormones or your ability to metabolize these things so if you're fully rested you're gonna even caffeine you're gonna way better pro- process that as well as we want to look at things like are we hydrated a lot of people are scared of water, won't drink water, says water (laughs) only dehydrates you. Then they're just eating dry food or they're drinking uh, stuff like, you know, that isn't as healthy. And it really does mess up the gut. If you can't handle drinking water and your electrolytes get thrown off that easily, there's probably some deeper issue, whether it is a malnourishment issue, whether it's a uh, excretion issue, like you're urinating too much sodium and potassium and all these things. So we want to make sure that you're fully hydrated uh, and that does mean taking in things like like these or fresh juices, green juices, et cetera. You want to look at if you're having enough minerals. Every every function in the body takes an enzyme, a probiotic, and a mineral. And if you're lacking even in one of those things, whether it's potassium or a sodium or these types of minerals, it can throw off your whole system. Right. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not saving up all of your uh, eating window for like one short amount of time. Yeah. If you're obsessed with food all day, that's probably an issue uh, that should be addressed as well. There's just so many little things that go into it, but what you really want to do is just create some practice instability. What does that mean? You want to go to bed around the same time. You want to wake up around the same time. You want to make sure you are hydrated on some level. You want to make sure that your, your weight is good and you have color in your face and you have some energy And uh, if you start to do these things, move your body, you're going to have a little more willpower control because you aren't frantic, manic, up and down, emotional, starved. You're going to be able to make an informed decision, take the time to plan out how you can be successful. And hopefully that leads to where you're not binge eating late at night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love it, AJ. That's really good stuff. Um, One thing that we, well, it kind of goes off to something that you were saying there, but like not getting enough sleep, throwing up hormones. There could be a gut issue that you are dealing with that we talked with in the episode uh, that um, is causing you to maybe potentially have these sugar cravings. Uh, Matter of fact, something that I did recently, I got back from Florida and I didn't really eat dinner. I had like a PB and J on the, on the flight home. Our flight was at fly at five o'clock. She like his mom made um, some PB and J for all of us. I had like one PB and J and then on the, on the way back, uh, on the car ride home, I had some like, I had like a bunch of, um, pistachios and figs, dried figs, which are like, there's like, it's like my fit. Like, dude, I'll even eat that as a, as a meal. I don't even care. I'll just do like <laughs> a bunch of fig, dried figs and pistachios, even if it is dehydrating, but it feels good. It tastes good. And I love, I love the combination, but I got back and I was still like hungry, but I knew it was, dude, I didn't get back home till 10 30 or something but I still wanted something. I actually had these like these nori snacks that I, I ate one of those and I still wanted something like sweet. So I had this coconut water. It was the coconut water that I got. It honestly kind of shit. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to add some dates here up to it. <laughs> so I like added dates here up and I had that as like, you know, a little snack and, um, it was, it was awesome. Like it felt, it felt good. It felt great. It's like, you could, is it low calorie? I don't know, but Like at least I'm still getting some nutrition and, you know, electrolytes from the potassium. And then I was, or from the coconut water and I was meeting that like sugar needs that my body probably needed, uh, with the dates here, which I'm totally cool with. I don't really care if I add sugar to stuff. So, uh, some people like you, AJ might care, (laughs) but for me, like it was a, it was like a good snack. Yeah. I mean, if I had like a juice, or like even a green juice or something that was there available for me or 7-Eleven. I would love that. That's awesome. Right. I love that stuff. It's great. Uh, but I still feel like that was a pretty good option for me when I got back. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like it was because you felt good from it. So Exactly. Uh, anything else? I think we covered a lot of stuff there. Oh, I, I guess. Oh, another thing too that we, that we just wanted to recap is that it could be, you know, a family member issue or a wife or husband issue or boyfriend, girlfriend issue or a kid issue to where like you're buying this kind of stuff in the house and you're not in like, it's for them, but you want it too, you know? So it's, it's always hard to like see them eating it and you want some too, you know? So. Right. Right. Or a stress um, issue as well. If you're stressed all the time and that's your way of coping, what people try to do is pull it out and just cope with stress. Right. And 
it doesn't usually work. Like I think if you are, your system's adapting to what's going on. And if you are really, really, really stressed and you want to quit smoking, Mm -hmm. it's going to be way fucking harder than if you're calm around uh, normal people who aren't crazy. Right. And you're not working a super (laughs) stressful job. The harder your life is, the harder it is to give up difficult, uh, unhealthy habits. Right. So I know it's not as simple as this, but if that is the case, if you're eating late at night because whether it's work is so stressful or your partner's so stressful or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, entertain the idea that that stuff needs to be addressed a little bit and not just, I'm weak, I don't have willpower. Because I'll tell you what, you put me around some stable-ass individuals or you put me in Hawaii and you put me around <laughs> fresh air where I'm chilling and all the restaurants and everywhere closes at five, I'm going to be in bed by seven or eight because of my environment. Yeah, right. Has nothing right. to do with my fucking willpower. I have so much willpower, <laughs> right? But you put someone in an environment that's so fast, so quick, you have so much going on, right? Right. The pressure's on. It's way more difficult. You are going to make a little bit of compromise there. Right. I I agree. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> I have the willpower. Um that's that I think a lot a of people built I think a lot of people beat themselves up because they do try genuinely really, really hard to succeed at stuff and uh diet or whatever it is, and they're just right. they're having such a hard time and they're really just in an environment that is almost making it impossible. How many ladies do you know out there that work in an office to where someone's always bringing in donuts? Yeah. They're always bringing in fast food and it's there and it's, you want to be a part of it and you want to be, you know, you don't want to be an outcast. It's easy to be an outcast when you have great results and you're like, all right, shit's good for me right now. But when you're having a hard time, excuse me, uh, it makes it even that much more challenging. So you want to entertain the idea that the people we surround ourselves with the environment that we're in it's going to greatly impact us and like we said in this uh this reaction video that we did and i talked about the blue zones they don't struggle to make good habits happen that's just mm-hmm. their life yeah it just it comes natural to them it's that easy um cool yeah uh i think if you have the capacity to like even just tell yourself to stop doing it you know just it doesn't be like oh my gosh god please Please, God, help me stop late night binging. I can't do it. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be like that. <laughs> but uh, just like, just tell yourself, hey, bro, fucking stop eating late night. Late night. That's your, that, that could be your last resort if nothing else is working for you. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, but yeah, like, if, if you aren't getting good results with like how you feel and what, um, and what, your body looks like and what you want for your body. And it's because of late night binging eating, you got to take ownership and you got to step up and you really got to tell yourself that you want this fixed. So, um, that's all I got, AJ. That was baller. Cuzzy. Great work. Um, anything else from you? I'm good. You are damn good, baby. I love that. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, Hey, until next time, stay up, be great. Always keep it hundred, baby. And eat late and stay hungry.